premature birth. It can break your heart. That's why two years ago, Group Health started the first preterm birth program in Minnesota. And it works. Today, Group Health's premature birth rate is nearly 50% lower than the state average. Healthier babies, healthier mothers. Just what you'd expect from Group Health. Group Health, quality health care for life. It's that time again. Time to get all the information you need for a brand new television season. TV Guide's fall preview issue. Pick one up today. Hi, I'm Barbara Mandrell, looking for the Visa tag. Here it is on clothes made from Visa, America's freedom fabric. Made in the USA by Millikan. Quality fabric and so easy to care for. Here's a salad oil stain on Visa and ordinary fabric. Both are dipped into regular detergent. Look, Visa of Daycron releases stains. And needs almost no ironing. So if you love that freedom, look for the Visa tag, America's freedom fabric. A new car buyer's credit a problem? Not with us. Not today at the mega volume dealer Merritt Chevrolet. Sure, we got 1-9 financing. Huge rebates, we got them too. But today at Merritt Chevrolet, even if you've never owned a new car before, do it today at a new 87 Cavalier for just $28 a week. Or move up to a full-size Caprice for just $56 a week. The right car at the right price with the right payment right now, only at Merritt Chevrolet. I-94 and Century Avenue, across from 3M in St. Paul. We'll see you here. At Dayton's 13-hour sale, timing is everything. For pity's sake, don't miss it. Friday only at Dayton's. I'm Bob Bruce, and on the next Wednesday's Live, visit with singer-dancer Louise Mandrell, Friday morning at 9 on Channel 5. minutes after the hour, the eyes of the entire world were on the arrival of Pope John Paul II yesterday in Miami. But our Steve Fox had a very special view. He was granted the opportunity of flying on the pontiff's private plane from Rome to Miami. And he now gives us this very rare look this morning at how the pontiff travels. The Pope arrived at the airport around 9 a.m. the day of the trip. He had risen much earlier, 5.45 in the morning, and said mass at Castle Gandolfo, his summer residence. He then flew to Rome by helicopter. Shortly before boarding, John Paul II had a few words for our camera. Already on board the plane were 75 members of the press, some technical support people, and the papal entourage, a total of about 100 travelers on the Alitalia 747. Within moments after the pontiff had climbed the stairs to his cabin above the front section, we were rolling down the runway. The Pope was on the road again, headed for America. As we crossed the Mediterranean, a Spanish military jet fighter took a position off our left wing and flew escort until we hit the Atlantic. Among those in the papal party were the Vatican Secretary of State, the head of the press office, and the Pope's personal physician, and a couple of high-ranking American clergymen based in Rome. Also on board was Frank Shakespeare, the U.S. ambassador to the Vatican. In the United States, as throughout the world, there is a tremendous sense that this is an extraordinary man, that he is a man of value, of principle, of courage, and the world has very few such men. About an hour into the flight, the Pope left his private quarters and came down to chat with us. Can I ask you, Holy Father, what your mood is as you begin this journey? Are you hopeful? Are you apprehensive? How would you describe it? I am in the hands of, of, of the providence of, of our Lord, of the Holy Spirit, and of, of Our Lady. Are you hopeful on the beginning of this journey? Sure, I should be hopeful. Are you apprehensive about the dissenters, the protesters you may encounter? Oh, that is... I am accustomed to that. It would be... Uh, I could say it would be uh, not quite normal of not, not having that, especially in America. Yes, sir. Thank you, Holy Father. I remember my first visit also. So Holy many three shown, you know. Holy Father. All told, the Pope spent about 45 minutes making a full circuit of the press cabin, answering all the questions put to him. His visit was the highlight of the 11-hour trip. After he returned to his quarters, the journey became just another plane flight, complete with airline food. First, there was breakfast, assorted fruit and mozzarella cheese. For lunch, pasta, of course. There was no special meal prepared for the Pope. He ate the same food as everybody else. After the meal, some of the press worked on stories. Some saved themselves for the labors ahead. 
There was a movie, Tin Men, rated R. According to his spokesman, the Pope didn't watch the film, never does. I always see him doing the same things. He's either praying or reading. Let me ask you a personal question. While acknowledging that he is the Pope, the leader of the church, do you find that he's a regular guy? Is he a guy you can have a, a conversation with? He's so informal that from time to time, I must, when I'm dealing with the Pope in some specific matters regarding my job, I must remember to myself, look, fellow, you are talking to the Pope. <laughs> Moments before we landed, Good Morning America was allowed a rare glimpse of the Pope in his private cabin, conferring with aides and preparing himself for what lay ahead. Friday in Miami, the Pope meets with Jewish leaders and then delivers the sermon at a public mass where upwards of 400,000 people are expected to attend. Then he boards a TWA plane and flies on to South Carolina and then New Orleans. By the time he arrives back in Rome, he will have added about 20,000 miles to the one-third of a million miles he has logged already in the course of his papacy. His aides say he plans to continue traveling and hopes someday soon to make papal visits to Moscow and China. Thank you, Steve. And our special correspondent for the Pontiff's visit to this country is Father Andrew Greeley, a professor and also a best-selling author whose nonfiction works include The Making of the Popes, 1978, and Confessions of a Parish Priest. Father Greeley, thank you for joining us. Morning, Catherine. A lot of coverage by the media has been given to items of dissent within the Catholic Church, but clearing up that reported dissension is not really the purpose of the Pontiff's visit. Well, I think he would say his, his purpose is to strengthen the the faith and loyalty of the Catholic people. Uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid he comes to the United States with a vision of America that's typical enough among European intellectuals, but it's not altogether accurate. The Vatican tends to view America as a consumerist society, where the purchase of consumer goods is our main value. Cardinal Ratzinger said the other day that in a, in a free market economy, it is almost impossible to have religion and ethics. Now, I don't think that's an accurate view of America, but it's the view which is going to shape much of this trip, I'm afraid, that this is a materialist, pagan, secularist country which must be called ever so gently back to religious values. And the uh, certain issues commanding the attention of so many people within the U.S. Catholic Church have now even given rise to speculation of maybe a schism, of a split-off of an American church, and now a poll this morning out by ABC News does give some credence to 40 percent of American Catholics, according to the ABC poll, which is first rate, by the way, would favor the establishment of an American church with only symbolic relationships to Rome. But my point is anybody that knows any history knows that it was that way in this country until the first transatlantic table was laid in 1852. And indeed, the centralized administrative control of the Roman Curia is not the traditional Catholic way. It's been around for four or five hundred years. I think that this, these people in the ABC poll are, are pointing both towards the past, when the church was much more loosely ruled, and towards the future. Father Andrew Greeley, and you'll be joining us next week. Thank you so much. In our next half hour, Mary Hart. You're home. Guess what? I got the promotion. And a new office. Tom and I celebrated last night. I got a raise, too. But <laughs> that I celebrated during lunch. <laughs> Every color. Vandalino shoes because it's a woman's world. This all-in-one wallet is free with every Bandolino purchase at Dayton's. Are you tired of cereals that have over-sugared, over-fibered, and generally toyed with your breakfast? If you're ready for honest taste in a cereal, you're ready for new Quaker Oats Squares. Wholesome, honest-to-goodness Quaker Oats Squares. Quaker Oats toasted into crispy, crunchy little squares with delicious whole grain taste. Honest taste from an honest face. New Quaker Oats Squares. What's your excuse for not losing weight? Nothing seems to work for me. That's because no other weight loss program ever offered such a combination of easy-to-live-with ideas. If you want to lose up to 8 pounds in the first two weeks, get started with Weight Watchers Quick Start Plus right now. Maybe I'll start my diet next week. Why wait? This is your very last chance to join Weight Watchers for only $7. You've just run out of excuses. So call Weight Watchers today.
If you've waited to buy a new car, you need to see your Greater Metropolitan Pontiac dealers and see why Pontiac may be your best value. See the new front-wheel drive Sunbird SE Coupe starting at only $79.79. See Pontiac 6000, the world-class car that outsold every import car in its class last year. See them now while you can get 1.9% financing or up to $700 cash back on every new Pontiac in stock. A limited-time offer, so see your Greater Metropolitan Pontiac dealers now. If you wait, you may be too late. Good morning, I'm Bob Bruce at 725 and the temperature here in the Twin Cities 52 degrees. Three St. Paul firemen were treated at a local hospital for injuries they suffered in a fire this morning. The three alarm fire caused an estimated $200,000 in damage to the Marion Park Professional Building. Investigators say the fire started in the basement and spread upwards through the walls, but they still don't know the cause. One man was arrested on DWI charges following an accident this morning. Police say the man was driving this van, which rear-ended another vehicle on Highway 12 in St. Louis Park. The collision left two people injured, a passenger in the van, and the driver of a second car. They are listed in stable condition this morning. Charges are expected to be filed today against the man arrested in connection with the stabbing of a 92-year-old woman. Ann Koch was stabbed a number of times yesterday by a burglar who broke into a Robbinsdale apartment. But miraculously, she survived the attack, and she is now in fair condition this morning. Well, today is a historic one for the business and trade industry of St. Paul, and for that matter, probably the entire world, because in just a few hours, St. Paul will become the world's newest trade port. It has been years since the concept of the Minnesota Trade Center was developed, and over that period of time, millions of dollars were spent, and unlimited hours of manpower were expended in the center's construction. Today's opening ceremonies will feature foreign diplomats from 33 countries. Another grand opening is set for today, this one for the new Veterans Hospital in Minneapolis. A Veterans Parade will be included in the dedication ceremonies, and the public will get a chance to tour the facility. Well, a little bit wet on the outside. The roads could be a bit slippery. Let's check with Mary Ann Sullivan and see how traffic is moving right now. Mary Ann? Good morning, and the roads are drying off very nicely. Traffic is moving smoothly, but you'll find some heavy traffic. 494 eastbound from West Bush Lake Road to Highway 100. It's heavy and slow. Also heavy on the Crosstown eastbound between Gleason Road and Highway 100, and it becomes heavy again at Penn Avenue. Highway 5, both directions from 494 to Highway 55. Traffic is moderate this morning, but again, very heavy on Shepherd Road eastbound between Randolph and Sibley. I'm Marianne Sullivan, Metro Traffic Control, reporting live for Eyewitness News. Thank you, Marianne. As you say, the streets are drying out just a bit, but they could get wet a little later on. I'll have today's weather forecast in just a moment. The Sofa Gallery Showplace in Burnsville offers a unique furniture shopping experience. Come into a relaxed atmosphere where you will find the most affordable and complete living room arrangements anywhere. Choose quality furniture with a lifetime warranty in the style you want. And you can change the fabric without changing the price. Come in and see why the Sofa Gallery Showplace is like no other furniture shopping experience. Prices and warranties are the same in our Brooklyn Park Warehouse store. Over 300 used cars and trucks must be sold now at the giant Viking Chevrolet in front of your friends. You can save hundreds of dollars. Look at this. 1984 Pontiac Fiero with air conditioning. You drive this car home today. Yeah, today. Only $4,988 or $1.24 a month. So what do you do? Let's pick the phone. Give us a call. Do it now. 786-6100 or we'll see you here at Viking Chevrolet. Well, you may get a little wet today in our forecast uh, for today. Uh, variable cloudiness with a good chance of showers redeveloping this afternoon all the way into the evening. Highs today will be in the low to mid 60s. Currently right now we have 52 degrees. The skies are partly cloudy, but as I said, there could be some rain showers developing a little later on. The winds are from the northwest at 9 miles per hour and the humidity is way up there at 93 percent. I'll be back with more news at 825, but right now let's continue with Good Morning America. It's going on right now here at Towsley Subaru. And here at Towsley Ford in White Bear Lake. It's your last chance for 87s at sellout sellathon prices. We are going for the biggest sellout sellathon in our history with the lowest interest in our history, 1.9%. With up to $1,500 cash back. With a few hail damage cars left at even greater savings. Hurry while the selection is great. Over 1,287s to choose from. Extra hours. Extra finance men. The Towsley Subaru. Towsley Ford sellout sellathon, sellathon now, now in White Bear Lake. Lake. I'd never try a microwave hamburger. 
because my burger's got to be real. Real beef on a real bun, and my cheeseburger's got to have real cheese. Now that's a real cheeseburger. That's a Micro Magic Microwave Cheeseburger. Well, you'll never get me to try on microwave french fries. Try new Micro Magic hamburgers and cheeseburgers with Micro Magic french fries. They're better than fast. They're delicious. KSTP, Minnesota's News Channel 5. the Chrisman with the Los Angeles County Public Library. Good morning, America! Well, aren't they fashionable at the LA Public Library these days? Just the way they dress around the library all the time. You gotta, you gotta look pretty fancy for the books. That's right. Good morning. I'm Kathleen Sullivan. And I'm Charles Gibson. It is uh, Friday, September 11th, and it's nice to have you with us this morning. It takes skill, timing, coordination, and probably something else you just have to be born with. This morning, Charlie Gibson is going to get metaphysical about the art of Hitting with baseball's best, Wade Boggs, Don Mattingly, Tony Gwynn. After I'm you see this, anybody will be a 300 hitter. <laughs> sure they will. Joel Siegel was going to be here as well. He's going to get metaphysical about this summer's Bafo box office performance. Hollywood has been batting a thousand. It has been a big summer for the movies, and he is going to uh, run down why it's been such a successful summer for Hollywood. And on the field for the Mets today will be the co-host of Entertainment Tonight. Mary Hart will be out on the field at Shea Stadium, and she'll be here in a few minutes to tell us why. Right now, we're going to go down to Washington. Edie Magnus has the news. Edie. Good morning, Charlie, and good morning, everyone. On the second day of his U.S. trip, Pope John Paul II is meeting with Jewish leaders in Miami. The Jews have criticized the pontiff's meeting in June with Austrian leader Kurt Volheim. Later, the pontiff travels to Columbia, South Carolina, and tonight he flies to New Orleans. Last night, the Pope rode in a parade down Biscayne Boulevard. The crowds were smaller than expected, probably due to security restrictions. As Sheila Cast explains, before the parade, the Pope was greeted by the President and First Lady. When Pope John Paul II joined President and Mrs. Reagan for a meeting, U.S. Central American policy was an important topic. Even before the two leaders got down to their talks alone, without aides to take note, the President was asked why he intends to ask Congress for $270 million in aid for the Contra rebels in Nicaragua when there's a peace plan in the works to negotiate a diplomatic settlement. There's an agreement to be signed that calls for some waiting. You can't let them stop. Mr. Reagan indicated he told the Pope he's committed to backing the Contras if peace negotiations fail. The two leaders also discussed what the President called the nearness of a U.S.-Soviet agreement to eliminate medium-range nuclear weapons. Afterwards, Mr. Reagan threw a barb at the Soviets. Of course, all of this depends upon Soviet willingness to get down to the hard work of completing an agreement. In his more abstract comments, the Pope called on Americans to share their wealth with the world's hungry and needy. The more powerful a nation is, the greater becomes its international responsibility. This meeting gave President Reagan a chance to bask in Pope John Paul's reflected glory, both of them supporting a plan for negotiated peace in Central America. But with the President planning to renew USA to the Contra rebels, it's not clear how long the aura of peace will last. Sheila Cast, ABC News, with the president in Miami. Former National Security Advisor John Poindexter testified in July that he never read a key memo outlining the diversion of funds to the Nicaraguan Contras until it became public. The discovery of the memo, written by Oliver North to Poindexter, forced Poindexter to resign. The Iran Contra committees released the closed testimony yesterday. In the Philippines, President Corazon Aquino has made a direct appeal for support in the wake of a recent coup attempt. Last night on national television, Aquino pleaded with Filipinos saying, I need your help badly. Aquino has also said she will make some changes in her cabinet after all its members resigned on Wednesday. Congress may come to the aid of ailing jazz great Woody Herman. Earlier this week, Herman was saved from eviction from his Hollywood home by friends and fans who donated money for rent. Now, Representative John Conyers from Michigan wants to introduce legislation next week to wipe out Herman's tax debt of $1.6 million. This evening on World News Tonight, Peter Jennings profiles our person of the week. And finally, achievement tests show American science students 
have fallen behind young British and Japanese scholars. A new study compared science students in 24 countries. They were given tests in chemistry, biology, and physics. Americans scored below average in every category, while the British tested above average in every area. Japanese students ranked above average in every category except biology. Also, the American scores were lower than in 1970. One reason, students now are doing one to two hours less homework per week. And that's our news. Kathleen? Aren't you glad you're above the age of 25 and your parents can't say, see, I told you so. <laughs> I sure am. <laughs> Edie, have a good weekend if I don't see you in a Thank you, you too. And in a moment, Dallas Rains with the National Weather Forecast. If you think all tartar control toothpastes were created equal, we've got news for you. One of these formulas, Colgate Tartar Control with Fluoride, has been clinically proven more effective, proven better than Tartar Control Crest of fighting ugly tartar buildup, over one and a half times better in a three-month study, and four and a half times better in a six-month study. So once you weigh the evidence, you'll know it's Colgate Tartar Control. Good morning, everybody. Have you had enough rain in Michigan? Well, look for some more. Thunderstorms from last night will continue today in a big band all the way from the Great Lakes states down through southern sections of Tennessee and Alabama, uh, two below Mississippi. Not one below, but two below had two inches of rain this morning. A lot of showers and thunderstorms there and some light rain showers will continue out in the central plain states. But west of that, the weather looks fantastic. Nice sunny skies in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Now on Saturday, let's see what happens. The rain and thunderstorms move rapidly to the east. Cool temperatures in the east and nice and cool over the northern plain states. The west will be delightful. Warm and humid with afternoon thunderstorms will continue in the southeast. That's the national weather. Now here's your local forecast. Good morning, this is meteorologist Karen Falloon. Right now we have partly cloudy skies and the temperature has now dropped to 52 degrees. We have some sunshine this morning, clouding over again this afternoon with a good chance of showers redeveloping. Highs today in the low to mid 60s. And I'll have the weather satellites coming up next hour. Kathleen? Thank you, Dallas. It's now 36 minutes after the hour. The art of hitting right after this. My driver's license my dad took me down for my driving test in our brand new car he spent hours showing me how to park so i got my license and i drove a straight home straight into the garage wall wham <laughs> the car was a little bent out of shape daddy was plenty bent out of shape but somehow i got up the nerve to ask for the car that same night daddy didn't say a word he just handed me the keys Daddy is still the bravest man I ever met. Remember that special person with something from Hallmark, the place to go when you care enough to send the very best. Great party. Hope there's room for these leftovers. My jalapeno dip's probably gone. <laughs> Whirlpool refrigerators make your world a little easier with adjustable shelves, even on the doors. There's even room for this full bowl of your jalapeno dip. Sure you put it on the table. Whirlpool. Days looking new and bright. One, it is. Three, and one, you're one, gonna two, start three, it right. Two, I am. One, two, Cause there's three, soldiers three. for you that's decaffeinated too. The best part of waking up is folders in your cup. Decaffeinated? And I'm waking up? Nothing brightens your morning like mountain-grown Folgers decaffeinated. Mountain-grown coffee beans have more enticing aroma and richer flavor than any other kind. Folgers so rich and good, the day starts one, like two, it should. And one, and two, and one, and two. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. The day's really shaping up. <laughs> my kids like soft things next to their skin. They like to put their cheeks on my face after I use Dove. It feels soft and smooth. Dove contains one quarter moisturizing cream. It won't dry your face like soap. With Dove, my skin feels wonderful. The best hitters in baseball, everyone probably agrees, Wade Boggs of Boston, Tony Gwynn of the San Diego Padres, Don Mattingly of the New York Yankees, even they agree they're probably the best three. So we went to all of them to talk about hitting, the mechanics and the mental part. 
Ground ball toward the hole. He's absolutely amazed. And off the handle of the bat. Wade Boggs is four for four. He's really unbelievable. At one point last season, Wade Boggs had been thrown over 1,100 pitches and had swung and missed at only 12. The main thing that you have to form is, is a, a proper foundation, which is shoulder widths apart, possibly a little bit more than the shoulder widths apart. Weight on the balls of your feet, not, not your heels. Once the ball is on the way, all it is is a transfer of weight back, sort of a pendulum effect. And the bottom half starts to go forward, whereas your top half is going back, which is hard to explain to, to younger kids in Little League, because your hands are actually going back when your feet are going forward. And that's how you wait on a ball. You talk about the two halves of the body working independently. Do most hitters in the major leagues do that? I think it's a select few that have the ability to do that. Boggs is hitting a mere 360 this season, best in the big leagues, except for Tony Gwynn of the Padres at 364. For me, this leg is important. You know, this leg can be, it can be solid like it is now. It can be up in the air, I can be on my toe like this. This leg for me is not that important. As long as I keep my hands back and I hit off a stiff front leg, my, sh my upper body's gotta stay still, okay? I can step into the ball, but I've gotta keep my upper body here. You know, I can't have my hands come up a little bit when I get out on that front foot, because if they do, it's all over. Ask players the best hitter for combined average and power. Most will point to the Yankees, Don Mattingly. The first thing would be to see the ball as long as you possibly can. And from there, I would say to, to wait on the ball. You know, let the ball get to you. Let the ball come to you as a player, and then attack the ball. I follow the ball all the way into the catcher's mitt. And I learned that at eight years old, and uh, I've done it ever since. When you come to the plate, do you have a pretty good sense of what a pitcher is going to do to you, throw to you in a given situation? I've faced guys enough times in the league to, to sort of feel how they're going to pitch me. And I, draw, I, I formulate a mental, mental picture before the game of the pitch that I want to hit. You have a feeling what the guy wants to do with you. It's not really, uh, I don't like to call it guessing at all. I like to have a, say more, I have a feeling how the guy wants to pitch me. In my case, it's more seeing the ball and hitting it. It's not going up there and guessing, looking for a certain pitch in a certain spot. What dictates where you hit the ball is where the ball is. If the ball's inside, I'm going to try to pull it. If the ball's outside, I'm going to try to hit it the other way. If it's down the middle, then it's my choice, whatever I want to do with it. And most of the time, the pitcher dictates what I try to do up there. OK, eighth inning, men on first and third. You're facing Mike Boddicker of Baltimore. Do you have an idea of what he'll throw you? I know exactly what he'll throw me. What? But I won't tell. <laughs> when I go up to the plate, it's like the pitcher's out there, and I'm at the plate, and that's it. Nobody else is around. I suspect that there are constantly attempts by other players to distract you, to throw you off, to to oh, get custom. inside that mental concentration. They do it. Uh, they, they try little things. Uh, uh, Ernie Witt tried to, uh, to wipe out my Kai sign one day when I drew it, in the, drew it in the dirt. A creature of habit, Wade Boggs has always drawn Kai, the Hebrew symbol for life, in the dirt at the plate. And he still does, every time up. There are certain catchers who will talk to you. Tony Pena, he'll, you know, he'll do everything back there. He'll spit on your shoes. The toughest thing that I've ever had to deal with in my life was uh, the death of my mother. And I had to block that out. And uh, as a matter of fact, I won a batting title that year. I don't deliberately try to hit the long ball. Uh, the long ball seems to happen for me. When I try to hit the long ball, I don't. So uh, I've learned to basically, when you stay within yourself, try to hit the ball hard, get good pitches to hit, the long ball seems to happen for you. I think home runs are mistakes for, for line drive hitters. Uh, uh, home runs are fly balls, and line drive hitters don't try to hit fly balls because fly balls are outs. So. The premium in this game is for home runs and RBIs. But for me, those are the two worst things I do. What I do is hit for an average. I get on base a lot. I steal some bases. I score a lot of runs. That's my job. I work harder than anybody on our club. And that's only because I want to be the best I can be. Hitters made or born? Born. Really? They're born. Uh, you can teach a guy to be better, to have a better chance of getting a hit. But as far as guys, just the natural ability to go up and, and get a hit, I think that that, is, that part is born. If you are successful three times out of 10, you're probably one of the better players in the league. And that means you're, you fail seven times. So there, I think you always have to strive for, for perfection and to be better in this game. I don't think you can accept the 300, the 310, whatever it is. I think you have to strive to, to be better than that.
Well, whether they're made or born, those guys sure have it. It's 44 minutes after the hour. Joel Siegel will be here with a summer movie roundup right after this. You never know what to expect when you try to sell your home. But if you don't choose the right real estate company, what's the worst thing that could happen? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Call Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Service. Our home marketing system is the better way to sell your home. In the irritating, painful world of itch, discover the relief of Benadryl Spray with the most recommended topical antihistamine, the kind of relief you can't get from hydrocortisone. Benadryl Spray and Benadryl Cream. The Cat Owner's Guide to Crave Behavior. The stare. The hint. It means give your cat Crave. And then you'll see the victory. Because Crave has the taste cats prefer. Oh, my kitty cat craves Crave. He's a doctor of optometry here at the Eye Works. First step in the glasses fast, glasses bright promise. Thanks, Steve. This little piece of paper is my prescription for a new pair of glasses. Now, here's the really fast part. The lab's right here in the Eye Works with the specially trained technicians and all the latest equipment. They can make my glasses in an hour. You can stay and watch if you want. The new me. That fast. The Eye Works. Glasses fast, glasses right. 